who somehow represent some kind of threat to Buckingham Palace and the White House. Just recently, Mali, Congo and Sierra Leone erupted yet again into what the BBC described as civil war. The truth is that most of these turf wars and civil wars play into the hands of diamond prospectors with the displacement of millions of Africans enabling mining companies to set up shop and create facilities which look like high security prisons. These are diamond mines and they mar the natural beauty of the landscape and strip the subterranean strata using high powered water hoses and acid and these diamond merchants and diamond mines are creating havoc and destruction all over Africa. Who owns these diamond mines? Well, in many cases, De Beers and other Jewish British aristocratic companies are running the diamond business. And it's been that way since the era of Sir Cecil Rhodes, a man so rich from diamonds that he actually named a country Rhodesia after his own name. Behind the scenes, vast numbers of guns, pistols and bullets are distributed to various African villages. When a local person discovers a diamond, miraculously, as if by magic, two things happen. Firstly, landmines are placed all over the area where there are diamonds. This keeps local people away from the diamonds until the Jewish British aristocrats move in with their high security diamond mines. And secondly, local people begin to die of a mysterious plague. The World Health Organization says there is no cure for this plague and the plague is called Ebola. When the aristocratic murderer Lord Lucan fled London after killing a woman, the mainstream media claimed they had no idea at all where Lord Lucan went. But we have tracked him down. Lord Lucan went to Botswana, which is one of the African nations controlled by Buckingham Palace. Indeed, all over Africa, there are British Hebrew aristocratic families extracting diamonds from African lands and they're leaving ecological devastation in their wake. Now we also have to add into this mix a fact that Jews very often hate Muslims and it is interesting to note that the Ebola plague is killing Muslim Africans in areas where there are Jewish diamond mines. Almost in every case, especially in Mali, the local people who say they deserve a fair share of the diamond business are branded as Islamic extremists. Activists in New York who have criticized Jewish companies for being involved in the so-called blood diamonds business, these activists too have been targeted and labeled by the mainstream media as extremists. British mercenary soldiers have been hired to distribute guns to stir up civil war in all these African countries where Buckingham Palace and the Jewish diamond traders in Amsterdam, Antwerp and London extract vast numbers of diamonds. Every country in Africa which has diamonds has, just by chance, a civil war. The British Jewish aristocracy are the biggest customers for diamonds. But diamonds are not just about wedding rings and jewelry. Diamonds are used as a form of money laundering and are an important part of the drug trade. Diamonds are also a very useful form of bribery. 
million dollar diamonds can be given and held in a single pocket as a bribe and the value of the bribe can never be seen on any bank account document. Diamonds are a very useful way of shifting millions of dollars across international borders because just a shirt pocket full of diamonds saves that person from carrying huge suitcases stuffed with cash. During the recent period of war in West Africa, we have witnessed a conflict that is in just over a decade left 50,000 people dead, hundreds of thousands of people homeless, and the country's infrastructure and economy in tatters. The poor people in Congo, Angola, Sierra Leone, Liberia and Mali have not even enough money to buy good walking boots. But meanwhile, tons of diamonds have ended up in the hands of the Jewish aristocratic cutters and polishers in Amsterdam and Israel who prepare and market the diamonds which are usually bought by the world's richest aristocrats. There is not a single diamond on the planet which has not caused massive ecological and or social damage. During the last 10 years of the African Diamond Wars, roughly half a million people have been the victims of killings, systematic mutilation or other atrocities with some of the world's worst crimes committed by child soldiers who were drugged to desensitize them of this awful fake war against terrorism, which is in actual fact fake civil war to protect the owners of the diamond mines. In the background, every week, private jets fly between the Congo and Tel Aviv in Israel, shipping out the weekly haul of diamonds from the area. There is, without question, a strange paradox that many African villages rely on a single standpipe of water while just yards away, high-powered water hoses flush diamonds underground by workers who have to suffer the indignity of anal probes and x-rays as they leave their workplace. The Jewish bosses making sure that none of their modern slaves have swallowed a small uncut gem to allay the horrendous inequality of their society. While the Jewish bosses of these diamond mines earn billions of dollars, the drivers of the trucks and diggers and mining machines earn literally just a few pennies a day.